Hello everyone, it's John Buck back again. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, how do we find the uh, moments for sums of random variables. So if I have two random variables and I add them, I'd like to be able to know what the, new, the mean of the new random variable is and what the, uh, what the variance is. Okay, so again, we're, our main focus for this video is the sums of two random variables. And so if I have x and y are random variables, I make a new random variable, capital Z, that is the sum of those two. The first two things I want to know are what's the mean of the new random variable and what's the variance. We're going to go on in the next video I'll record after this. We'll show you how to find the PDF of this sum, which is a little more involved. But to find the mean, I can say, well, the expected value of z is equal to the expected value of x plus y. And we could, if you're familiar with the idea of linearity, at this point we could say, well, linear expectation is a linear operator. So the expected value of this sum is just equal to the sum of the expected values by linearity. So the shortcut, if you know linearity, is to say, well, because expectation is a linear operator, I can do that. If you're not comfortable with that, it's not too much harder to prove this exactly. We can also say, I'll just take a moment to work this out, I could say, well, the expected value of x plus y, if I use the definition of the expected value from the joint moments video, I'm going to have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x, oh, that should be lowercase because we're now talking about the outcome, so I have x plus y times the joint PDF, dx dy. Right, just to find the expected value of anything that's in terms of bivariate random variables, I have that. And now the next step is to use the fact that I have essentially a sum here when I distribute this through. So I have two double integrals. One double integral of f times the joint, or I'm sorry, x times the joint PDF, dx dy. And then another double integral times y times the joint PDF. And then the next step is to look at this, again, make it clear that's a y there, to look at these and, and to, to do the order of integration differently. For this first one, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate with respect to dy. For the second one, I'm going to do it with respect to dx. And let, let me show you why by regrouping terms inside the integral. I'm going to say if I pull the x out front, and I'm left with here, I'm going to in, I'll keep this in parentheses, I have f of xy dy, so that's my first integral, and then I'm doing dx. And in the second double integral, I'm going to do them in the other order. Oops, I've gotten ahead of myself. Let me clean that up. So I now have y times this integral, again, of the joint PDF, x and y, dx, and then the result of that will be dy. Because now if I look at this thing here, let me move myself up just a little bit. This thing in the... Uh, the bracket here, if I take the joint PDF and integrate with respect to y, I'm getting the marginal with respect to x. Similarly, on this side, I'm getting the marginal with respect to y. Right, so now if I plug those things in, things get pretty simple. I'm, I'm almost back to the result we jumped ahead to with linearity. Now I have the integral of x times fx 
of x dx. And the second integral, I have still one integral left, and that's the y integral. So I have y times f of y dy. And now those are very directly, I can recognize both of those. That's just expected value of x times the expected value of y. So when I add the, 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 uh, the uh, when I take two random variables and add them, the mean of the new sum is the sum of the mean. So I could say that the, the mean of the sum of two random variables is the sum of the mean. Okay, and that, one of the nice things about that property is all it depends on is linearity. So it doesn't care if x and y are independent. We'll see when we get to the PDF whether or not they're independent makes an important difference. Let's go on to a, a new page and talk about the variance. So if I want to look at the same thing, I want to look at now the variance. And again, I'm starting from the idea that I have this new random variable z as the sum of x plus y. We can say, well, the variance of a random variable is the expected value of z minus the mean of z squared, right? And I'm going to write this, I'm going to write each of these things out in terms of their constituents. We can say, and I'm going to do it with a little color coding, anticipating where I'm going to end up. I'm going to say, well, I could write z is going to be x plus y. When I go subtract these things, I'm going to have minus the mean of x, right? When I, I say, I just saw the mean of z is equal to the mean of x plus the mean of y. And the reason I'm color coding these this way is to make it clear well, how I want to group them in a second. So I have all of this squared and then the expected value around it all. And so I'm going to bring these all together by color. I'm going to say, again, I have a, a big, I'm going to actually do this as a square bracket inside. So I'm going to have x minus the mean of x now. And I can group that. And then I'm going to say I have also y minus the mean of y. OK, so I've sort of regrouped the two things to put them with their, oops, not squared yet. I have to close better, the brackets better. So then I have, right, all that squared, because these two equations are really just the same. I've just reordered things and then put parentheses around these two. The reason for this is to make it clear that I'm really just doing a, a, a binomial here, or just to, as some people like to say, I'm foiling these things out. I'm going to have this squared plus the second term squared plus two times the cross term. And I'm going to use the linearity of expectation now to say, well, if I have an expected value of all the sum of all those terms, I can take the expected value of each one. So I'll have the expected value of x minus the mean of x, again, squared. Make these parentheses red as well. Plus, I'll have the expected value. of y minus the mean of y squared. Plus, I'll have 2 times the expected value of x minus its mean and y minus its mean. Not squared. Oops. All right, so I have, when I FOIL these out, I have the first term squared, which is here, the second term squared, and then 2 times the cross term. But if I look at these, I already have other names for each of these terms, right? The first term, the expected value of a random variable minus its mean quantity squared is just the variance. 
So this is sigma x squared, or the variance of x, if you like, plus the second term is sigma y squared. And we saw in the definition of joint moments, this middle term is 2 times the covariance of x and y. So if I add two random variables, the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances plus two times the covariance. Right, so the variance of a sum of two random variables is the sum of the variances plus the covariance, plus twice the covariance, plus two times the covariance. One of the things that means is that if x and y are uncorrelated, then the covariance, their covariance is going to be zero, right? And that simplifies things. And then, so if I have uncorrelated random variables, the variance of their sum is just the sum of the variances. And you may remember from our discussion of uh, on the joint moments of bivariate random variables, right? Just a, a quick reminder, independent random variables are always uncorrelated, right? So this, this result, last result here, also holds always for un independent random variables since they're uncorrelated and their covariance is zero. So again, the, the quick summary, if I add two random variables, the means always add no matter what. The expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values. The variance is the sum of the variances plus two times the covariance but if the two random variables are uncorrelated and or including independent, that means that the variance is the sum of the variances. Okay, so I'll stop here for this video, uh, and then I'll, I'll record another one about the PDF of the sum. Thanks.